The release of ControlNet back in February 10th has taken the AI art community by storm. Why? Because it has changed how precisely we can generate images. Even though it's only two months old in the AI timeline, it already feels ancient. But that's okay because ControlNet 1.1 has just been released. So in today's video, I will quickly review the new development since my first ControlNet video that you may have missed and show you what's better, what's different, and what's new about ControlNet 1.1. For those of you who don't know what ControlNet is, it essentially allows you to provide a reference image to help generate your images more accurately with text for stable diffusion models. The reference image can be of different types. In the ControlNet 1.0 release, there were 8 total models that were officially published. Each of them lets you control your generation in its own unique way. For example, Canny Edge, MSLD Lines, HDD Boundary, Scribbles, Human Pose, Semantic Segmentation, Depth, normal map, and we were also teased with the unreleased line art colorization model. Initially, these official control net models were only trained on Stable Diffusion 1.5. However, some new implementations were made shortly after to generalize control net 1.0 models to all other different base models, including fine-tuned models based on SD 1.5 like anything V3 or SD 2.1. There's also FD16 models to run faster on GPU and additions like the concept of multi control net, which lets you stack multiple references as input put like depth plus human pose in a single generation. Most of these were optimized and included in the SD Web UI control net, which is an extension for control net for automatic 1111. And also another paper called T2i adapter, which is very similar to control net published only a short while after it. Some control net models also have preprocessors, which are tools that help obtain a specific type of reference image from an image, which often requires special models to analyze the image to get the desired type of reference. This way, you can use a preprocessor to generate a reference if you don't want to make the reference manually. Some models don't have preprocessors available like transfer image to scribble, but other preprocessors are available such as extract the depth map from an input image. However, using preprocessors is not always necessary, so it really depends on your use case. Some people will use external tools to pose a stick figure, so it's pretty flexible to achieve the controls that you want to do. What's even better is that ControlNet also provides ways to train your own ControlNet, allowing for community-made models like Face Landmark, Uncanny, phase, media pipe phase, and Zoe depth, which are great alternatives to choose from besides the official control net models. One of the coolest control net studies I've seen is from this Twitter user called ToyXYZ. They conducted different studies of various angles, directions, pose, and amounts of figures to see how well control net performs with these inputs. This includes face landmarks and Kenny Edge mix, outline and pose, depth plus pose, pose amount and distance, face amount and directions, semantic map and pose, and so much more. They also propose a very cool workflow that involves mapping poses and especially faces in 3D with Blender, and using the 2D view to screenshot and generate the results. You can explore their blog here. Just be warned, their Twitter timeline is sometimes slightly not safe for work. What's even cooler is that ControlNet has been developed to generate coherent videos too. TemporalNet or the grid method, which I mentioned in a recent text to video video is a way to generate or style transfer videos with much less flickering. It relies on the interesting fact that multiple images will be highly coherent if they are in the same image generation. This text to video style transfer works by taking a few frames out of a video, combining those frames into a single image like a grid, styling it with image to image, put them back together, then interpolating between them with Epson or DaVinci Resolve's the flickering tool. This naturally reduces flickering between the frames compared to generating frame by frame. But unfortunately, the video length is then limited by how large the grid image your hard work can process, so it usually can go beyond a few seconds. However, this may all change soon, as ControlNet 1.1 has proposed some really interesting experimental models along with other improved ones that could change image-based stylization and editing. However, no major adjustments like changing neural network architecture were made, which is actually good news since it means 1.0 architecture works well so far. For the improvements, most of the official 1.1 models were trained with an NVIDIA A100 for 200 GPU hours, generally resulting in increased robustness and quality. The improved models included depth, normal map, canny edge, MLSD, scribbles, soft edge, segmentation, human pose, impaint, line art, 
and a specific anime line art model that was not released until ControlNet 1.1. With these improved ControlNet models, workflows that include latent couplings such as line art colorization can provide more precise edits in a content-rich image. To explain what latent coupling is in a single sentence, it is basically a semantic AI paint bucket for regions you specify, like having the hair be orange in one region but black in another. For the experimental models, there is now an instruct pix to pix model which looks extremely promising compared to the original instruct pix to pix paper and can perform edits that look much more realistic. Then there is this very fascinating shuffle model that is trained to recompose images. I was initially quite confused about what it actually does, but it seems like an image stylization method that does not require any clip related functions, which is very interesting. It feels like it's what something tokenization can do, like LoRa or Dream Booth, but it doesn't rely on tokenization. So the input image acts as a base and the reference image serves as the style, and you can use the prompt to guide what the resulting image looks like based on these two images. You know, now I understand why these two models are called experimental because there are so many interesting experiments that can be done to see their limits, and there is even the possibility of eliminating the need of Dream Booth or LoRa in cases where you don't want to train a model. On a side note, the author of ControlNet, Lumen, has also repeatedly stated that this is the only stylization method that will be developed and maintained officially, and no other clip or tokenization method will be implemented. He mentioned it's because this is the most promising method out of everything else, and they have given up on developing those methods too. So y'all should leave him alone and LET HIM COOK! The unfinished model is another draw-dropping addition to this legendary work though. It is a tile control net model and it creates large images like 4K or even higher by tiling smartly. Before, if you wanted to create an image at a very high resolution, some people tiled the image into different parts and then upscaled them. This created the problem of tile borders becoming very obvious after upscaling and a lack of coherence between the tiles since they were generated separately. On top of that, the prompt would also be a problem when upscaling in diffusion. To put it in author Lumen's words, if your prompt is a beautiful girl and you split an image into 16 blocks and do diffusion in each block, you will get 16 beautiful girls rather than a beautiful girl. And if you use meaningless prompts like clear, super clear, ultra clear for some blocks, there is a possibility that content will be generated randomly and not have an overall consistency that dictates the entire image. ControlNet Tile solved this problem by identifying and increasing the influence of the semantic target and also decreasing the prompt influence on subjects in inside the images that are not related. So you can see the a handsome man prompt doesn't influence the upscale of these image tiles. It is a very big brain idea and it is still in development. And this is just the first official follow-up of ControlNet 1.0, already with this many new things added to ControlNet. We can make a religion out of this. As of the making of this video, Automatic 111SD Web UI still hasn't implemented 1.1 and they are still working on it, but you can check this repo for any updates. And this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can freely explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and have fun with your creativity. Whether you're interested in learning AI from scratch, picking up digital art, starting to take photography, or even doing video editing like I do for these YouTube videos, Skillshare has a class for you. Personally, I've been using Skillshare to level up my Photoshop skills. I was able to learn from highly experienced professionals in the field and apply these new skills directly into the work on this channel. One course I've been watching is Adobe Photoshop CC Advanced Training Course. It's been providing me with a lot of great Photoshop tips and better my understanding of how Photoshop works. It goes in an incredible depth which helps me to use Photoshop more efficiently and teaches me a lot of things that I don't understand about masking. What's great about Skillshare is that you can learn at your own pace, so when you're curious to learn new stuff, you can start by entering the topic and explore to see if you can finish the total lecture time. This way, you can easily plan your weekends to learn about the passion that you always wanted to start. What's even better is that they are currently also providing an offer of one month free premium trial, so you have plenty of time to check out their other amazing ad-free and high quality classes. The first 1,000 people to use the link will get one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. And thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Las Chilias, Chris Ledoux, Alex Mariz, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.